Councillor Cordova. Thank you. I'll be quick. Thank you very much. I've just got a couple of questions, um, and my apologies to you, Councillor Grace. Um, quickly, is there any evidence that food vans cannibalise the business of other traders? And the preface of this question is just like, we're constantly looking to get more businesses into Channel Court, because with shopping centres, for example, the more businesses you have, it actually attracts people to stop, stick, stay and spend, because there's more variety, there's more choice, and therefore when you have more customers in general, more foot traffic, then you get more business for everyone. So do we actually have any evidence that food vans cannibalise local businesses? Mr Reeve, are you able to provide, provide an answer on that? Um, through your Acting Mayor, it's certainly not a body of work that we've actually done to actually ascertain, and bearing in mind that not all councils actually have food trucks or food vans actually operating in the municipality, um, it certainly would be interesting to see, and I guess um, certainly other councils have various different um, permit conditions they put on their food truck vans as well at the same time. Um, so it'd be difficult to actually give a definitive one way or the other um, in terms of the answer to your question. Thank you for, for trying through you acting there. Um, it was academic, I know. Um, my next question is about, within the policy, what counts as low noise emissions and is it worth us trying to amend this to stipulate an actual decibel limit? Uh, do other councils do that, for example? Mr Reeve. Through your acting mayor, I mean, what we've referenced here, and, and it's really just to try to uh, avoid duplication or, or avoid um, missing what we need to actually put in there, is we've referenced um, other various environmental laws, um, bearing in mind with this particular policy, it, it's mainly tied up with locations of food vans there, um, hours of operation, those types of conditions as compared to the food they're serving or the or the, the noise levels, which is something that's actually managed through our environmental health area uh, for all of our premises there. So we've, we've, I guess, been a little bit more silent on that part of it, if you like, as compared to trying to add that into the policy and, and then find that's actually covered through a, uh, a different area. Okay. Uh, thank you. And through your Acting Mayor, how do we enforce the, the parking and the road rules elements of this policy? And the example, the hypothetical that I'd use is, if someone were to email kc at kingborough.tas.gov.au on a weekend and say, well, I've spotted a, a food vendor um, overstaying, they're, they're, they've been there for longer than four hours, or, or they're breaching the conditions in, in whatever way, how likely is it that a council officer, that we would have capacity to actually respond to that and enforce the policy that we have? Mr Reeve. Through your Acting Mayor, I mean, that's one of the difficulties of um, actually trying to manage any sort of policy there that which goes outside of um, council hours there, bearing in mind that a lot of the trade would actually happen on weekends uh, or in some areas there, depending on whether it's allowed, it might have be happening after hours, uh, out of uh, business hours there. Um, we don't have any um, compliance that is dedicated to that type of role. Um, we certainly do deal with particular safety issues or issues that we might actually have in other parts of compliance, if you like, but it's on an exception as compared to as a rule type of thing. So we, we, we just don't have those resources to actually do that part of it. Thank you. And um, through you, Acting Mayor, my, I guess, so I'm, I'm not actually a fan of like um, mandatory sentencing and three, kind, three strikes and you're out kind of policies, but are there any, for, for if a food van were to serially breach conditions and then you catch up with them, you know, nobody's there on a weekend to actually deal with it, but you, you talk to them three or four or five times, should there be an amendment in here or do other councils have those kinds of so, so many strikes and you're out policies uh, for serial offenders? Mr Reeve. Through your Acting Mayor, I don't believe any, policy, any council has that type of policy there, but it's certainly something that when we're made aware of any particular issues with any food van there, whether they're trading outside their permit conditions or, um, or continue to do things out of ours, it's something we do investigate. Um, I guess what I was alluding to before is that we don't have someone out on the beat, if you like, um, during those weekend hours that can actually instantly deal with a particular issue there. But we certainly follow up on any issues that are actually raised. Um, and um, I guess we've alluded to that in the policy as well to actually say that we can grant a permit but we can also take a permit away um, if people are actually doing the wrong thing. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Mayor. And so just briefly to my contribution on, on this part of it, um, I think that we should tread 
we should go with caution in terms of just assuming that food vans harm local businesses, harm the bricks and mortar businesses. My my hunch is that they probably are complementary in many respects in the same way that a shopping centre, when you offer more variety, it's more attractive to customers. So I, I think we should um, explore that more. Food trucks, food trucks, food vans obviously cost less as far as start-up and food costs and, and so they're good options for people who are expanding their business to a second location, etc. And so, yes, they are a more cost-effective option, therefore you could say that they give a competitive advantage to the food van rather than the bricks and mortar store. But I would say also that on the other side of that, they will be paying per permit for a year in Kingborough, it's $1,058 in permit charges. So that is a contribution that they're making for, for the roads and for the, um, for the power and for the, well, I mean, they're using their own power mostly, actually. Um, so I just think that there are two sides to this story. I'm very sensitive to the idea that in residential areas you actually don't want um, high noise emissions and you don't want disruption to the, to the neighbourhood amenity. But I also think that on, um, on our beachfronts, um, they should be vibrant, exciting um, places with a lot of people coming to enjoy the, the natural beauty but also to enjoy the provisions that our small businesses can offer. And I do think that food vans are going to provide some uh, economic... Um, economic uh, benefit to the community. So I think it's a really interesting one. I think we need to be sensitive and cautious as we move forward, but at this stage, I'm not necessarily um, convinced that we should definitely rule out. I mean, just going back to that idea of a kind of having a free market where businesses compete with each other and do, you know, they try and do, uh, they offer the best services that attract customers. Um, I think having more choice for customers is probably a good thing rather than a bad thing. So I wait to hear what my other colleagues uh, contribute with interest. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cordova. Councillor Gray.